One of the really strange things about cosmology and the study of black holes is that in some ways, and I stress some ways, our universe actually resembles, at least in the math, a black hole. This gets into highly speculative science that we really have no idea if it's true, and a matter of reality, or if it's not true, and just a dalliance of current alternative thinking in cosmology. But the idea that our universe is a black hole is not new. It was proposed by several scientists decades ago. Known as black hole cosmology, it lays out the idea that the observable universe, everything we can see, is in fact the interior of a black hole. The idea did not gain much traction, but rather simply sat in the background of cosmology as an interesting possibility. But without a deeper understanding of black holes and gravity, an idea that probably would evaporate at some point, much like a black hole. But this idea has had a comeback, curiously through recent observations of the James Webb Space Telescope. JWST has been a resounding success, but at the same time has spawned a huge amount of new mysteries about the universe. One of those mysteries stems from the observation that the most distant galaxies in the universe, which are also the earliest ones we can see, have a disparity in their rotation linked to the paper by Lior Shamir, announcing the discovery in the description below. About two-thirds of the observed galaxies are rotating clockwise, whereas only a third are rotating counterclockwise. This should not be. In a truly random universe, you should expect to see a 50-50 split between the two. But in this study, we don't. This suggests that for some reason, there is a preferred direction for galactic rotation. The problem is, there really doesn't seem to be a mundane reason for that, at least one that readily presents itself. It should be random, based on what we know. So the observation is based on a sampling of 263 galaxies, which is a fairly large sampling, but other surveys that have been done did not show this effect. As a result, this paper is causing some controversy, but it's interesting nonetheless, and is at least something that can be confirmed in the future or shot down especially if there was selection bias involved. If it stands, there are two main candidate hypotheses that may explain the apparent disparity, and both of them are odd and have strange implications. One is that the universe was born rotating. If that's the case, then it agrees specifically with the predictions of black hole cosmology and that we're inside a black hole, though the link there is somewhat tenuous. That would also mean that many of our ideas in cosmology are more incomplete than we thought they were. Back to the drawing board for more than a few hypotheses about the cosmos. One of the oddities of black hole cosmology, also sometimes called Schwarzschild cosmology, is that it implies that our universe, being a black hole, actually is embedded inside of a greater parent universe. Just as black holes dot our own universe and may contain universes of their own. This would mean that universes are nested like dolls, in a sense, and it's anyone's guess how far that extends. Is it black holes within black holes, all the way through to infinity? Or it's turtles all the way down, if you will? Or there is some master universe that is not a black hole and merely spawns them? Then the spawned universes spawn black holes themselves, and so on. In other words, it's turtles all the way down until you get to the pavement. Moreover, how far does it extend? Is there some limit that prevents the formation of new black hole universes at some point in the chain? Black hole cosmology was formulated concurrently by astrophysicist Raj Kumar Pathria and mathematician I.J. Good. The idea is this. As you probably know, the event horizon of a black hole, also known as the Schwarzschild radius, is the point of no return for anything passing into a black hole go into the event horizon and there is no way to get back out, due to the immense gravity involved. Not even light can escape. In black hole cosmology, the edge of the observable universe is in fact an event horizon as well, meaning that we're inside a black hole. Aside from the idea that I'm glad I host a show called Event Horizon instead of the Schwarzschild Radius, it doesn't quite have the same ring to it. Though spin-off called the Schwarzschild Radius hosted by Anna and the Possum would be neat, but I digress. There is one thing to note here. That we live within the event horizon may not equate to actually living in a black hole of the same type that we see inside our universe. That may not be the case. If it is the case, and the universe is indistinguishable from any other black hole, then every black hole inside this universe could be hosting a universe of its own. 
these daughter universes would be invisible to us, because they too would be behind event horizons, and no information about those universes can escape the confines of their event horizons. In other words, lo and behold, this would be indistinguishable from what we see as black holes. This was further built on by physicist Nikodem Poplowski. Black holes as we know them come about from gravitational collapse. The gravity of the accumulated material is so great that it overwhelms the forces that hold up matter. Setting primordial black holes aside, we don't actually know if those exist, black holes are typically formed when a giant star's core collapses. Usually this happens in a supernova, but there are some odd ideas that under the right conditions, a star can simply collapse into a black hole without getting around to a supernova. Regardless, a black hole results. The end result is a singularity of immense, unfathomable density. Poplowski's idea is that various processes inside the black hole actually get the singularity spinning so fast that the matter cannot ever compress into a singularity. So what you end up with is an extremely dense ball of matter spinning unbelievably rapidly in an environment that is increasing its mass by creating new particles. In short, the collapse of a black hole initially kicks off a kind of bounce to prevent a true singularity. That bounce looks suspiciously in some ways like the Big Bang. One such way is inflation. The math of this model of a bounce in a black hole actually conveniently creates a finite period of time of what looks like cosmic inflation in standard Big Bang cosmology. It's almost spooky, actually. And the end result is what looks like a flat, isotropic universe that's also homogeneous. The two terms are distinct, and it turns out that this is exactly what we live in. Weirdly, this also validates the strange prediction of relativity of Einstein-Rosen bridges, better known as wormholes, because each baby universe would be linked to the parent universe through a kind of tunnel, which is the black hole. You can't traverse such a wormhole, but it does dovetail with the prediction, at least in a sense. Or so we think you can't traverse them. There is an idea out there that through the use of negative matter, a hypothetical substance we have no idea how to make that the universe doesn't prohibit, that is anti-gravity by nature, actually might provide a way to enter and survive a black hole in some way. A stretch, but the idea is floating around out there. That's interesting in itself, but there is another aspect. Creating a black hole is possible, both for creating micro black holes and powerful accelerators to getting a bunch of matter together until it collapses into a black hole. Some unbelievably advanced, godlike, alien Kardashev Type 3 civilization could, if it really wanted to, create an artificial black hole with a universe inside it, if this is all correct. If they somehow had control over the parameters of that universe, then the game changes for how we view highly advanced alien civilizations. There are two things to note here. Maybe the reason we do not see Kardashev Type 3 civilizations is because they simply disappear into artificially created black holes to live in a universe better suited to their needs. The Fermi Paradox solution here is that all sufficiently advanced civilizations had two paradise universes of their own making. They simply stop living in this, to them, subpar universe for some reason. Or perhaps even more spooky, all civilizations at some point try to find a way to somehow get through all the turtles back down to the pavement. After all, black holes evaporate, and maybe the pavement does not. The other thing to note is that we still have the fine-tuning question open about the universe. We have no idea why it is or how it happened, but the physical parameters of this universe are just so to allow for matter and ultimately intelligent life to exist. That might be an indicator that black holes, being a matter of the laws of physics, are all the same and that the parameters are what they are because there is no other way they could be. That would imply that all universes inside all black holes are habitable and may have civilizations in them. And possibly what set all black hole universes on the same path are the properties of the original pavement universe. And in itself, who is to say that the pavement universe, should it exist, was alone and may itself be in a multiverse of otherwise failed universes but it just happened to be fine-tuned not just for matter and life, but the creation of black holes. Lions, tigers, and bears, oh my. Further into this question is the idea that maybe this universe is fine-tuned because it is, in fact, an artificial black hole that someone created, and that we just happen to be embedded in it. 
This may be someone's paradise weekend getaway universe, and we just haven't seen them yet. But back to black hole cosmology. Another prediction floating around out there are white holes, the other end of a black hole, which is a region that instead of having an event horizon that you can't escape from, it has the inverse, a line for which you cannot ever enter, and everything flies away from it, sort of like the Big Bang. But not exactly, as it is a point in time, not a floating point in space. Unless, of course, it's a black hole floating in another universe. But white holes do in some way resemble our universe. But those are also unstable, and require special physics to even make work. On the other hand, huge physics mysteries like the Arrow of Time are solved here, because it would simply be inherited from the parent turtle, I mean universe. So that's one way of explaining the seeming rotation of the galaxies in the JWST observations. In short, the universe is rotating. We know that black holes rotate, and if you were in a black hole forming a galaxy, that would create a preferred, though not set in stone, direction of rotation. But there is the other possibility, that it's all an illusion, and that we're interpreting the JWST findings incorrectly. That could be simple observational or analytical biases. But also this comes from how difficult it is to measure the rotation of galaxies relative to the rotation of the Milky Way. The assumption was that the Milky Way is simply rotating too slowly to have an effect on the observations. But if that's not the case, then this whole thing goes away and new problems arise. Also that we can't easily measure the rotation of entire classes of galaxies, just some of them. There's rooms for problems here, hence the controversy. This would also mean that our distance measurements of deep objects like early galaxies are off and would need a rework to account for this observational problem. That actually might be a good thing, because it ends up explaining discrepancies in the expansion rate of the universe and the ages of galaxies, which we know there is something off about that. For example, there was recent work done on one of the earliest and most distant galaxies known, and they found the signature of oxygen in a galaxy that should be too early to have enough oxygen to be detectable. Well, that might be explained if we have the age and distance of the galaxy all wrong. That may well be. Interesting times indeed, and yet again, JWST found something we were absolutely not expecting. That telescope is delivering delightfully. Thanks for listening. I am futurist and science fiction author John Michael Godier, currently very spooked. You see, as I noted, black holes evaporate. Does that mean universes evaporate as well? If they are indeed black holes, what happens when the parent universe of this one evaporates? Or multiverse forbid the pavement itself comes to some end or its rules change? Will someday all the turtles evaporate and it will be as though they were never there? Spooktober in March, indeed. And be sure to check out my books at your favorite online book retailer and subscribe to my channel for regular in-depth explorations into the interesting, weird, and unknown aspects of this amazing universe in which we live. <laughs>